and the crib. Really, really nice to meet you. That's um, it. Yeah. Uh, Miles Hingston, the collaborator of mine, was the first one who, well, linked me uh, an article about Three Space, and it was uh, wow, um, really impressive uh, what I read and what I've heard. So it's a great pleasure to to, to speak with you. Um, why don't you tell a little bit about yourself and the organization to begin with? Sure. Okay. Um, so Three Space was a, a collaboration of uh, myself and Henry Mason. Mm-hmm. We started in uh, 2010, probably got our first property late 2010. And my background is town planning, urban planning, and uh, working in regeneration, uh, economic development type field. And Henry's background is in uh, accounting and uh, finance. So kind of a uh, a mix, but um, we also have uh, business degrees, etc. So, I guess an interesting combination, and uh, it, it came together nicely. So, uh, three space. Um, I guess my personal frustration was in terms of uh, the regeneration sector and not being able to deliver anything in terms of very quickly, and not actually physical redevelopment in terms of knocking buildings down, starting again was displacing neighbourhoods, doing all sorts of uh, horrible things, but some very good things. Mm. And I thought, these things take five, ten years to uh, deliver anything. When I could see all these empty properties starting to, uh, uh, you know, this phenomenon, which, you know, lots of other organisations are doing it, but it was still a, a problem, I guess, of being able to make it easy as possible for uh, an end user who wanted to use a building, and then also make it their incentive there for a landlord and make it easy for them to give up their property. So we, uh, I guess, three space came along to hopefully uh, hop in the middle there and make it as easy as possible for the two parties to to come together. And uh, going back to that regeneration, (laughs) bigger picture thing, the idea being that, um, you know, we can help to get, uh, rather than saying this area should be a cultural corridor or that area should be uh, an education precinct, why not give it a go, get people to test out ideas, give them to, a chance to try things and see whether that is, you know, the niche uh, area, etc. that 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 town or that city should be should be up for or mm. trying. So that's kind of but there's lots of different things that all feed into that but um yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's funny though but it's um as far as I can tell, uh, when you use those words, it's more or less the same thing that uh, Giron has been been trying to do on a local uh, Copenhagen level. Yeah. Here, uh, for the same reasons. Um, so, yeah. Uh, well, I guess it's a, an obvious problem to to some of us that there's the de- deterioration, the physical deterioration in the the local environment, and yeah. and people, creative people in need of space. Exactly. Um, how did the name come about? Three space. What does it, what does it stand for? Uh, that's that was actually Henry's idea, but I guess it became. We are focused on charities, social enterprises, non for profits, and I guess voluntary groups. So the three comes about in terms of the third sector. Mm. But then, if you run it together very quickly, it, it it's it's free space, but it also becomes. You can almost sound like free space. Ah, true. So it was kind of a little bit of a play there. And, and, and when we, the, the model works at the moment with it being funded by landlords, we can offer it free of charge. The, the trade off being if a commercial tenant is found, um, we require the building back at short notice. So it is kind of that free of charge thing. Three space is, mm-hmm. is to do with the, the third sector, which right. is charities, social enterprises, etc. So. That's kind of the okay. the idea behind it. More or less the uh, uh, yeah the same setup that we see in Copenhagen. Though um, we have lawyers involved to, to sign a temporary contract of a, well yeah. of loan use rather than lease of the property. Yeah. yeah. So so the short notice is anywhere between six months to to two years if uh, okay yeah. Well, tenant is found. All right. We, we have uh, ours is down. Just so you know, ours yeah. is uh, in a lot of instances down as short as seven days. So, uh, so it's very. Right. <laughs> it's, an, it's an interesting dynamic, and that's that, that's kind of working on the idea that the property industry 
has a, a mindset and a part of what we're trying to do is change the industry mindset and how and bring fluidity to it and uh, rather than this this long term mentality which is has been around for so long so um, the, the short term thing we're kind of taking the risk mm-hmm. in in that one working that nothing ever happens in the property industry in under you know one month two months so we'll hear about it early on right. but for the peace of mind to make it as easy as possible for the, the 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 landlord, the peace of mind is there that we can be out within seven days. Cool. So, how many people are involved now? Uh, we have um, we have we just put it on, so we're about seven seven staff now. Hmm. So, uh, right, All right. and we keep growing. But uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Uh, mm, mm, yeah. How do you, how do you fund that, or rather, who funds you? Well, so we're funded by landlords, and uh, at the moment the, the model works by um, our funding coming from them, but they also make a savings on their taxes. So they they essentially pay for our, our service, but at the moment the beauty of the, the tax system in the in the UK allows for them to uh, to also benefit in terms of uh, making a saving on their on their uh, business rates. I haven't heard so that. There is, yeah. there is incentive there mm. and a financial incentive, which is 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 also um, part of the reason why we saw that three space could work. And the idea being, if you're a, a quite a big landlord, you have maybe uh, ten, twenty vacant properties rather than just one probably sitting there. So there's no real incentive for you to to give up one, two, even three, four properties because there's no real savings it's no real benefit but if you've got five to ten then uh this starts becoming a bit a, a huge benefit of someone coming in the middle and saying i'll take all that uh off your hands uh and i'll, I'll in the beauty of how the, the the legislation is set up in the uk is that you can make a savings across that portfolio so, so that yeah. so that the, the idea being that uh, yeah and, uh, and I guess we're we're charging for a service to to look after that and manage and vet mm-hmm. and um, uh, our users, our charity users. And you were aware, aware of this, I take it, when you started up. Yeah. 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 So yeah. so you found the need to create sort of a win-win-win situation. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Cool. Um, could you describe maybe which region you you started in and how you you spread out from there geographically? Yeah, we started, our first building was with a quite a big landlord in the, in the city of London, so in the, in the financial district, and that was um, you know, a classic sort of recession hit part of town, and uh, they'd lost uh, you know, so many tenants in the building, and so we took over. Uh, it wasn't very large, but it was probably maybe 3,000 square foot, I think, uh, mm-hmm. office building. And that was perfect. Great location. It was it was it was one of those dream things that uh, where it was completely furnished with your high end furniture, mm. and uh, the the tenant had just completely left and and left everything there. So we were all just walked in to an office that was all set up and uh, and ready to go. So that was an amazing start. Great location. Gave us kind of a profile and and and, and lift. We were then able to do, we got a lot of, uh, we opened that up in, we do focus mostly on shops, but the office uh, thing is something that we're also uh, work really hard on where we get, particularly in London. So, um, and that's where using a high profile location and good quality, uh, that uh, enabled other organisations to come in and also raise their profile as well. So... Um, which I think is you know hugely a part of of what we're trying to achieve. So. Right, definitely. Care to many any uh, specific other organisations or initiatives that you have in close collaboration with? Um, I mean, yes, for me, it became. I've I've seen so many different uh, types of of uses, and it, it started from the beginning. It was always like let's. Just going up, let's really try and see what can we do. What can we do in an empty building that hasn't been done before? And let's uh, just prove that anything can be done and anything you want to do, etc. So, 
One of the most interesting is a circus group in Manchester, and that's quite a large building. I'd probably call that, it's a retail warehouse, but it's, it's more of a warehouse. And that uh, has been set up as a circus school, but also they've put in a homemade parkour. If you know parkour? Oh, yes. So, so uh, a parkour course inside of that. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of videos of that on the web, but... Yeah, it was really interesting. That kind of proved to me that you could you could do anything, and and it was really really interesting. There's another one in in Blackpool, and this is on a on a high street and a shop that was uh, completely. It's just one of those classic uh, secondary high streets where it is it is dead except for Starbucks, who I'm pretty sure is is to to pull out and leave. And then there's a couple of of discount stores, and that's it. And this guy, uh, uh, he's called it, it's called NW Baseline, and he does um, uh, works. He's a design. He runs a design business, but it's a social social enterprise, and he, he puts any a lot of the funds into running free workshops for young people, mostly in the in the school holidays. And so he, he has this. You know, it's all glass windows. And um, there's, there's some brilliant photos and footage I've seen him in where he gets the kids um, in there with, with paint in balloons and then puts up a canvas. And, uh, you know, he puts plastic in because the, it's quite a raw building inside. He, mm-hmm. he really has the freedom to do whatever he wants. And I guess the, the beauty of that is that the, the young people feel much more comfortable going into somewhere like that, which is, you know, on the street where they're hanging out. Anyway, a bit better than going to a you know a community centre mm-hmm. or a run building, which is a bit you know whatever. So that kind of uh, you know made me realise that, that that's a way of engaging you know people that would perhaps miss out or not be interested in that sort mm-hmm. of thing. Definitely. Otherwise, so I think yeah, there too. I mean, I could go on and on and on. We've had other things like roller roller derby. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so that's that's brilliant. Uh, seeing that um, we've had a pop up restaurant in an office, which was um, that was kind of a really <laughs> tricky one, but it was it was six floors up in uh, in an office building in in Old Street in London, and that was with Food Cycle and Food Cycle take wasted food and turn it into nutritious meals. Right. So this was a fundraising event for them, and they did uh, you know three nights. Uh, and that was very much the pop-up kind of thing where you had to, uh, you know, apply in advance, and only fifty tickets were sold. Right. So that was, uh, you know, so those things, yeah, really <laughs> exciting stuff. Right? Um, if you can compare your current level of engagement and success to, say, your wildest dreams of two years ago, how do they match up? <laughs> um. Yeah. Interesting one. Um, well, to be honest, I, I guess when you, when you start anything, you, you're more than, you're so excited for it to get <laughs> past even that first building. And I think when we got quite a large portfolio with uh, JJB Sports, and then we're now up to about uh, we've had about thirty or forty, about forty forty one buildings we had through through our hands. So mm-hmm. it's quite a big. Uh, achievement from the you know in really kind of a year and a year and a half. So um, I think yeah that's fantastic. The other thing um, I, I actually even thought we'd probably have even more buildings than that. Okay. But you always obviously aim high and then <laughs> come back. The the other thing that I have noticed too is there's things that I hadn't even thought of, um, which was not my intention of why we started it, and it's now. I realise how much we're playing into the, uh, into these wider things and these these bigger picture uh, type stuff. So, such as um, one of them being the the sharing economy mm-hmm. and collaborative consumption and and that quite a type of movement, which is is really starting uh, to take off. And I guess it's partly maybe because I'm I'm researching it more and I'm getting more involved in it. But uh, I I guess that's. Um, you know, having access to to assets to do, um, you know, not, not necessarily owning it. Um, so the Zipbar is a good model, but um, mm-hmm. applying that to, to the commercial property industry. 
uh, I think is a huge task. And if we can achieve it um, by, by providing, uh, uh, demonstrating to landlords that there is value in their wasted, uh, what I would see as a wasted resource, they will see as an asset that's sitting there and it's still uh, doing something thing for them, but uh, why not get more value out of it by uh, getting some use? So um, I think, and that's what kind of comes to the, the the sharing economy, and I think that's that's also growing. I also can see um, there's whole lots of new models coming out, which is building transparency, and there is no transparency in the property industry, so you, it's very difficult. I'm not sure whether it's the same. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's very difficult. Um, I know here and also in uh, Australia, which is you know where I have quite experience, but it's very difficult to tell who an owner is or who a leaseholder is or who it's very difficult to track that back, and therefore it brings no um, incentive for anyone to celebrate anything if they're doing good to a bit, anything they're doing well in a building. And if you think of that at a basic level, it's about um, sustainability in buildings. You'll see things like retrofitting to energy fitting mm-hmm. and stuff. There's, there's a market there to sell to, to to sell to to tenants, but also I can see with transparency can come people saying, well, I've got a vacant space, but I'm doing something about it by uh, you know letting a charity, letting someone to use it uh, while I'm not while I don't need it, and for them that's giving a social value, that's giving for me it's making a, a saving on my business rates or it's it's uh, security, it's activation, etc. You, you could argue it's a moral tax deduction. Um, so have you, uh, have you experienced, have you noticed any uh, sort of change in attitude among any of the uh, building owners or building owner enterprises that you work with? Um, yeah, it's, I'd like to say, I think more from, from reading about it and then I, I think I've, I have seen and I have quite a negative view on looking at some of the property industry and making the joke that they all uh, they all dress the same and they all hang out with the same, same people and they necessarily it, it, yeah there could be five people in the world that own the world's property because they all seem to <laughs> look, talk the same and do the same but I, I am meeting more and more as I get into it people that it, it's not all like that mm. and it, Finding those ones who, I guess, who are willing to embrace new ideas and new new concepts and and give them a go. And I do think now, uh, I, I think you know, you look at the empty shops, etc. That that is something that people have 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 said, oh, that's just a, a, about the recession. But uh, it, it's clearly not. And I think you'd be absolutely blind to to not see that it's online and and a massive shift. And a structural change in what what's happening in in retailing, and I do think the the financial side of thing will it often helps to force change. And I can see that uh, you know even in the commercial, it's making commercial sense for uh, a lot of the guys who wouldn't have thought about it previously to start uh, at least considering it or uh, looking into it. So um, I, I guess if it's not get there in the mindset across the board it's it's maybe the financial side of things is pushing things along a bit uh, and hopefully it hurries it up a bit. I could imagine still a year and a half I mean it's uh, it's probably early days compared to what's all right well traditionally I mean when when, when citizenry citizenry sorry, excuse me takes over a vacant building or space um, you know we'd call it occupation or squatting yeah okay. And uh, well, Occupy was a brand which is quite a, a trendy upsurge last autumn. Um, how, how do you relate or, or react? Or what, what's your opinion of the Occupy phenomenon? And, and, and do you have sort of any collaboration with people who associated with that brand? Yeah, I mean, I think it's 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 fine, and, and the political side of things, I obviously yeah. So I, I can see why there's all that that um, there's a need for it, and I think it's a, it's a great cause. At, at people taking over buildings without um, going through the necessary steps, I definitely don't agree with. And I think what what we're trying to prove is that and I think what it kind of stops <laughs> if if you enter a property and do that, it, 
that creates a negative perception about like if I get told anything by uh, uh, someone in the property industry they will make the joke and say you you guys are squatters or you guys are and it, it, it attaches with a, a horrible stigma and I guess what we're about proving is it, it, it can be controlled and it can and there's no need to have this fear mm-hmm. that something is going to happen or the fear that you can't uh, get people out when you want your because we very much believe you should be, I, I'm not, I don't want to stop anyone being able to use their asset for what they invested in for mm. what its purpose was for all I'm asking is that they allow us to use it when they're not using it so it, it, if you have uh, people you know, doing it without permission and things like that, then it kind of defeats that mm. uh, trying to achieve. But I, I, I definitely agree with the, the idea and, I, and um, all the, the, the concepts and the way of thinking about why the whole Occupy movement started. But does that make sense? In terms <laughs> uh, it does. And, uh, well, sorry to put you on the spot. I knew it was a bit of a. It was a tricky question. I didn't phrase it uh, as well as I could have. Um, but you know, for for me personally, it's also been a, well interesting experience. I've been associated with the Occupy, uh, well experiment as I'd call it here in in Copenhagen, <coughs> on Denmark. Uh, not quite a movement, though. Some people would like to to see it grow into that. I don't think that's likely. It, it was a phenomenon. Um, but uh, coming upon after then, uh, Kirom and discovering what the work they've been doing. Uh, basically since 2006, but you know, then slowly uh, stepping up, uh, it just made me realize that using otherwise wasted resources, uh, well, if it's going to work, then it has to be a collaboration. Uh, it, it can't be, you know, uh, an occupation because the, therein also lies the fear that those that have those resources and let them go to waste won't want to cooperate with you. Yeah, uh, and that—that that, I mean, it, it's also a, you know, you could argue that it, it's for some people uh, it, it's a matter of laziness that you don't want to do the work of speaking to the owners on their terms in their language um, and accepting that you're you're transitioning. I mean, for facilitating social change within one system as it crumbles, perhaps. I mean, that's. That's only my perception that that it is crumbling, right? Uh, so you uh, so you build something temporary with a view to the future, in collaboration anyway. That's exactly. that's where I'm at now. Um, all right, let me see what else do we have on the list. Um, do you have any specific expansion plans or new initiatives for the future in three space? Yeah, uh, what are we trying to do? Well, we're <laughs> always always looking for new models and, and different ways of doing things. I guess there's a few, there's some online type things which if we had more money and more time we'd probably look at and that's probably going to be a vetting system but also a collaboration tool that would be enable. We get, where we find it's most exciting is when we get open a property up and have two organizations that will benefit or and actually work together from using the property at once and they actually meet each other as a result of us opening up that property Uh lies even because there's a lot of charities that duplicate there's a lot of groups that work in the same local area and don't actually ever meet each other and don't have a reason to i think that's quite common Uh so we can use that property as a tool to further that uh collaboration uh, yeah, I think we're we're onto something. So, um, how to uh, speed that up and how to get more people uh, relaxed about the feeling of taking on uh, a building and what that involves. So, working around those sort of concepts. How to, I guess, coming with that is how to set up a building and make it usable and look good with a very minimal amount of cost in terms of materials and in terms of so we're getting better at, at, at um, improving the spaces so basic painting and basic um, fit outs that, that that are very much temporary but still I guess give it a feel that makes you feel comfortable uh, and then also the, the, the fire risk and safety etc 
bottoming that out so we have that um, the, the absolute the, you know the minimum level but the level that makes us have you developed I mean your own procedures methods yeah. uh, for for community involvement in these things yeah and a lot of that is just really getting out there and finding um, often when we take on a property it's because it, it, we are you know we're all over the UK and we're based in London and It's it's been very much kind of four people, and we are only just at, at seven now. But it gets <laughs> it's very difficult to cover, you know, even as far as Scotland from London. So we spend a lot of time on trains and a lot of time moving around. But we also rely on on a bit of trust and a bit of uh, meeting people, and then allowing them to pass on once we vet them, etc. Pass on keys, etc. But we do find if you can find a, a user, someone who's very keen and a strong, uh, uh, I guess strong, powerful and strong in the community, they're fantastic. If you can, uh, that's one thing we have found. If you find someone like that, and we'll call them a, a primary user, mm. in it and uh, be happy to, you know, when they're not using it, let someone else in, etc. But they may, will I guess, allow them to have first first use of the space and then but in return for that they'll almost take on a little bit of the, the, mm. the so you bestow upon them a, a sense of responsibility and and that makes them eager to live up to it I, guess. That, I think that is something that we we have learned and you know if you we often have the most problems in the buildings where we're sitting in in uh, in London because people just rely on us to, uh. to look up You know, I guess that's what it comes with. You give uh, the people the opportunity, and and when they know it's their responsibility, it it becomes it is an empowering thing in itself. I think, and uh, you know that can be only be a good thing. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess uh, uh, yeah. So that the, the temporary fit outs, the improving our, our models of how we interact and and find our users, and then it's perhaps combining that with an online thing that would improve, would expedite that. Uh, speed that up, sorry. Um, and then, yes, we're also looking at a model of uh, it applying with the, the, the government has a lot of empty property, so trying to look at ways that for them service. Mm -hmm. um, because it, it, uh, almost developed, I never really thought about it is. Um, Sitting in the middle there, we have the the ability to not only find people, but also to to tell them to leave when they need to be told to leave. When going back to what I was when someone needs the asset back, mm -hmm. becomes a lot more powerful when you go into the public sector. Who uh, often you'll find when buildings are given pro you know free of charge or whatever to. Uh, a charity group, etc. When there, it comes a time when they need the building back for for whatever to do, it gets very difficult to uh, move them on. And I guess we're in the position where hopefully we can start moving them on to another building. You 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 say hopefully. I mean, ha have you had any? Uh, I mean, has this happened? Have you had to help move move people out that you moved in? Yeah, yeah, we have done that. We have had to do that, and um, it were it, we, we've done it in London um, with a couple of the office buildings that we've had, and that's been successful. A couple, it didn't work because it was just still too far away. But um, and there's also one that we had. We we actually lost one in Birkenhead, and then had another one that popped up quite nearby. So uh, that was easy enough to do, and it has it has kind of worked out. And I guess once you build up a network, and that's what we always envisaged, you can start saying, "Well, yeah, that one's going to go, but we know this one's here." And then it, it becomes this nice, nice little network of of moving people around. But uh, that only comes with scale, and and quite a big scale. So. Yeah. Um, I mean that is part of what we're trying to achieve go to grow to that level so mm -hmm. uh, question just occurred to me with regards to, to organization I mean within three space and the network you collaborate with and also on the the local level um, 
which online tools do people use? I mean, uh, uh, any anything particular you'd like to point out, or is it just you know the social networks that people are engaged in, anyways? Yeah, I think. Uh, um, I mean, there's all the Ning forums and things like that, and you know our, our friends who I'm sure you've heard of, uh, Meanwhile Space. Uh, they've got uh, you know a very good Ning forum, mm-hmm. and then there's also the other. Uh, there's an empty shops network. Um, Dan Thompson, he's got a you know a great uh, um, online in terms of resources, etc. So there's there's a lot of that stuff going on. Mm. Terms of action. Um, there's also one called the PlayStation, which is about asset transfer, which is another model, which is, um, you know community ch- right to buy, etc. Mm-hmm. Of of assets, but there's not really anything that I guess pulls it all together and um, it, you know everyone I guess uses a lot of our users are still not at the stage where they're even using Twitter or Facebook etc so that's, our, that's kind of held us back in terms of doing too much in the, the online thing because even though I guess we it's very easy for us to forget that you know everyone's doing it there's still a lot of people at the grassroots level which do uh, they just deal in their local community and they don't really need to shout about it all the time and they just need uh, you know they know who the, the people they need to help they, mm. they might work with the kids from the local school that's all they need to you know they're a charity that works with um, certain disadvantaged group that group they've known forever there's <laughs> you know there's no even though I could say to them I think there'd be a great benefit in you telling other people about this for funding etc it's it, mm. It's a different thing. So that's something we need to keep in mind that they you know, not everyone's using Facebook, Twitter, etc. And I guess that's why we we still find going out there and and doing traditional email uh, is is still our best way of reaching these people that are up for for trying and, and doing these things. But I think as time will come when they will be on there, and I can see huge benefits in in particularly also moving to the next step of making it very easy to... If, if you look at... Have you heard of Airbnb, which is a... Uh, you know, in terms of the residential... Well, it's a sort of an uptown couch surfing variant, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's about using... Uh, when you've got your flat and you're away for the mm-hmm. week to someone. So if I was to think something like that would ever work in... what. Uh, sorry, what I'm saying is what that Airbnb tool is actually a vetting tool or a uh, a tool to look at your trustworthiness. Mm-hmm. I guess to me, I can see that being a huge advantage. That's something to be able to say to if you're giving someone an asset, how do I how do I trust them to use? It's all very well putting in a leases, but leases are such a slow. Mm-hmm painful thing which uh, you know get lawyers involved etc so I can see there's all these the, what's the other the finance one where they do a number crunch on your Facebook pro, your link and you know it's a hard thing to think about it that people are going to be looking at all this, this mm-hmm. in some it also builds up your transparency who your trust with and then it makes it easier for people to trust you to use uh, your know, property for. Hmm. So I think something around that, but it, it is very hard for us to get our users who are still that grassroots level, and and yeah, we're still. Gonna, I guess that's. Um, well, I mean, I, I I can see the difficulties. I really like the the. I mean, the notion of, of services like Airbnb being, you know. A platform of trust uh, and a community of trust that you could then scale into other areas and other directions. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, since we have this periphery, oh, periphery of uh, of platforms, uh, the only thing is just a mainly a matter of time for for, for some cohesion to, to, to emerge and then people to to get to use some of these platforms and collaborative networks to to form. Uh, on the basis of that, I mean, sure, it, it, it's it's a hope uh, on my part as well because I've, I've discussed with a lot of people who are thinking these things uh, and, and and see the need for them that that you know cohesion and and a critical mass of users on 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 one platform is 
seemingly difficult to achieve. Um, but Absolutely. So I was, I was wondering, though, as you mentioned, uh, I mean, the collaborative consumption uh, and sharing economy uh, communities. Yeah. Um, you ever in any discussions or dealing with, with um, people with visions of virtual or alternative currencies as a, well, nice to have or a necessary step somewhere in the future? Um, alternative currency. So you mean uh, like local local pounds and that, mm -hmm. that sort of thing? Um, I haven't. I've dealt in Wigan. I've been in talks with um, the guys up there that's run Wigan Plus, which is like a, a local loyalty card. Mm -hmm. So that's like independence, um, being able to work out, I guess, their supply chain, but also so you get discounts for shopping in in uh, or shopping at the local centres, so coming back to the town centre. Right. So I guess the, the similar. Yeah, but the, I know that the currency thing is about you giving you the incentive, isn't it, to shop? Mm -hmm. Well, also it, it's it's a matter of you know community uh, control and, and engagement. That, um, <clears throat> for instance, many online games uh, have you know flourishing virtual uh, economies, and uh, I've done some research into how uh, that strengthens. Uh, that community, the, the fact that that you have, um, I mean, you have this group of people with whom you can trade in the currency that you have invested in with your own time, right? Uh, the hours and years you may have spent playing this game, and that is an, a you know a local economy of the local uh, currency system, uh, except it's only virtual, um, and so yeah, we're just dealing with. With these theories and, and and looking how how they might uh, play out, if someone attempted to transfer them into the real world, um, but uh, again, then we have the legal issue of counterfeiting uh, cropping up. Yeah, hadn't thought. Of it. <laughs> right, but there is, there is. I um, I saw a model the other day, which is like Kickstarter, but. It's for it's location based mm -hmm. out of uh, San Francisco. So the the example that they, they give is about say your local bar wants to build a covered area mm -hmm. and an seating area, and it's going to cost them three thousand mm pounds. -hmm. Uh, so you you invest, but what they'll get, they'll you invest twenty five pounds, and they'll give you a thirty five pound bar tab to spend the um, thing and you also get the benefit of an improvement to your local bar as you get the the the, the outdoor area mm -hmm. covered so but I, I really like those concepts because I think that that works locally and gives you that incentive to if you wanted to invest in your um, your local area it gives you that and it also gives a chance for someone to actually improve it mm -hmm. or make it better so I think Definitely. I mean, I mean, it is a, a, a starting trend. I think uh, if it is, it's going to be a trend. I mean, we, we had the the first crowdfunded bar open in, in Copenhagen uh, a little more than a year ago, uh, and I invested in it. I mean, off the fly, <laughs> not that I had money just because of yay, it's a crowdfunding initiative. Uh, and well, not due to the fact it was crowdfunded. I think due to the way it was managed uh, and the general bar competition in central Copenhagen it, it folded within a year uh, which was sad but okay. yeah um, I guess maybe people aren't aren't ready or aren't aware enough that, that uh, what a local commitment to auto financial will do and um, you know that, that leads me actually into the, the last segment of questions which uh, I'd like to discuss with you a slightly more philosophical character um, yeah. Basically, I mean, for, for someone uh, going into something, something like this and, and founding an organization like like Three Space and, and building it from the ground, I mean, it, sure enough, you spotted the niche and, and, and have you know developed it, it from there. Um, but yeah, if I may ask, what is it, what's your understanding of the state of the world? 
Um, what uh, what made you do something like this? Other than you thought it would be fun and, and you saw a need for it. Uh, yeah, I definitely saw a need for it, and I definitely it was frustrating on my part. And I guess personally, there was uh, working in my career was not being able to. Mm. And if you ask anyone who goes through works six, seven years in a particular career, uh, depending on what it is, mm -hmm. uh, mine was a lot of drawing um, strategy plans and uh, coming up with policy, etc. But uh, all good ideas, but politics would get in the way, way or etc. would happen. I, I guess what I what was so exciting about what I thought looked at this is I thought, hang on, it, it is a a solution that could actually work for everything, everyone, and can deliver a solution, you know, straight away within a very short period of time. So um, th that I think, um, you know, was amazing. Mm -hmm. But um, what you know, what led me to do it? But um, and then obviously seeing, you know, the benefit that that it can have and uh, what I can do for people. So that's kind of reinforced that. Has that answered it, or are you looking for uh, it's the state of the... Well, I, I, I did ask two questions, so <laughs> you certainly <laughs> answered one of them. But, but it, it's, it's, it's something I do. I mean, I, uh, I, I, I do ponder the state of the world, so I actually ask anyone I get a chance to what they think of it. Do you, so do you mean where it's, where it's going? Or what the, where yeah, the, where, where it's going is the next question. <laughs> you can answer both. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, what can, oh, it's a tough, tough question, isn't it? I, I guess um, I can see, yeah. You know, I guess this ties a lot in with with three space, but the the, the DIY um, urbanism, if you like, mm -hmm. and people starting to take into their, uh, you know, with, it all comes with austerity and, and governments pulling back on spending a bit. And I, but I do think that, and even I've noticed with my friends and uh, et cetera, with people that I've never thought of, are starting things and, 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 and doing things. And it's becoming a lot easier to do that, I guess, through collaboration networks that we're talking about, a lot of online stuff, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So coming very easy to to meet all sorts of people around the world or wherever who you need to get that, that knowledge and and I think I've definitely noticed that it's it's becoming a lot easier to, to start things and do things and and um, yeah hopefully bringing back more of a, a community feel into what we do rather than I guess it, it's been big business uh, leading the world for mm -hmm. you know the last what 10, 20 years or something—it's been that kind of corporate, corporate type feel, and I think now it feels like it's that often. That also comes with the the bank screwing up uh, Montenegro. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't have. <laughs> so and not being liked, but I can see that. Well, I'm hoping that it'll shift to be uh, there'll be an incentive for if you're a big business engaging with more of your your customer base that way, mm -hmm. and then same time helping them who I can see all these more of I guess this DIY urbanism I don't know what the better but more of a community regeneration or more of a, a, a people starting things and and doing things so if the two of those can, big businesses uh, less shareholder mm -hmm. uh, or driven coming down to a bit more local level and the two joining up then it becomes an interesting place but that's probably a long way off but uh, there's something there, I think. Anyway. I mean, uh, it certainly where I see is a three space and and your fits in and uh, and you know f to an extent we're front runners. Uh, these organisations are examples of what uh, what can be achieved right now. I mean, from one day to the next uh, by looking for a win 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 situations. Yeah, um, and and obviously there's a huge scaling potential. Uh, but it requires, well, maybe as little uh, as maybe it only requires the desire to to have a local commitment uh, and and to and to facilitate that, yep. and and that's what's slowly emerging. But it would make sense, and it would 
it would paint a more hopeful picture than, than just looking at all the enormous systemic problems uh, of you know where we are right now. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, that's, yeah, that's the kind of my my dream side. Mm -hmm. the, the negative side, I think the the, the other thing is obviously population growth is is heading towards cities and if I look at cities the cities that I know that the rich for the poor are getting poorer and that's uh, yeah running side by side and that creates all these kind of uh, you know unhappiness etc I think the quicker we can get the two together in my dream scenario <laughs> The, the better we can have so it doesn't go into um, out of chaos which you can kind of um, see I see, you know the riots would maybe be an example London riots but uh, you know who knows that was for all sorts of reasons as well so, um, but <laughs> it's yeah no but, but of course I mean uh, we, it is a to my mind a rather critical an interesting part of history to live through and, and um, so I'm really, really grateful to, have, to be able to have a conversation like this and, and to well, to engage in and know of collaborations that, that sure enough, we have big problems, but small solutions can scale up. Um, I really like that. So, so, I mean, final question. Uh, overall, would you say that you're afraid or hopeful for the future? Uh, can I say a bit of middle? Mm. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, yeah. I think it can go both ways, and I think that there's an opportunity there. And um, the more we, we work together and get these um, these ideas happening, and the more they become mainstream, and the faster they become mainstream, I think is uh, going to be better for for everyone. So. Yeah. yeah. Andrew, thank you so much for taking the time for this. Not at all. No, fine. Yeah. Thanks. All right.